So today I want to show you how to implement your own functional functions using the magic of iterators in Go. So, um, geez. Okay, so let's take a look at this function. So we have my map, and this my map, what it does is it takes two generic types, it takes a V and it takes an E. So why am I doing this? Well, it's because a map, what it does is it takes some element and it maps it to some other element, right? And what you're going to do here is you are going to take, so this function, my map, is going to take an iterator and it's going to take a function. And as you can see, this function takes one type and returns another type, right? And this is not necessarily always the case, right? So you could potentially have a map that just takes an integer and for an integer and that's perfectly fine. But this just gives you the freedom to, let's say, take an integer and return a string, for example, if you want to. And this is going to return an um, iterator of E. So, so what this is going to do is it's going to arrange over all of the elements in this iterator and it is going to yield every single element. But before it yields that element, it's going to run this F function on that element. So that's how the mapping is done. That's pretty simple. Let's take a look at the interface to it. So this is how you use it. You, well, I mean, this is just my example, but I have a slice here. I have a slice of one, two, and three. And what I'm doing is I am converting it to an iterator using this uh, handy um, helper function. And what I'm doing here is I am running this map, I'm passing in the iterator, and I'm passing in this special function I built, right? So this is my function, and all this function does is it squares whatever it passes in, right? So I get an i, and I square it, and I return it. And that's it. And here we are running this uh, collect function. And uh, what collect does is basically takes an iterator and it converts it back to a slice for you. So let's run this and see how it works. So as you can see, I got a one, four, and nine. That's pretty simple. So next up, reduce, uh, let's take a look at filter first, actually. Okay, so with my filter method, okay, so with the filter, what the filter does is it takes one generic type, right? So it takes a V, it takes an integer, just like the map, and it takes a function, but here's the key, here's the key thing about this function. This function, it takes one generic type V, right? And returns a Boolean. And it has to return a Boolean because uh, your filter has to take a predicate function. So a function that returns a Boolean is um, by definition called a predicate function, right? And it has to be a predicate because otherwise I can't do this. If you look at line 12 here, as you can see, I have my F function and I'm calling it with this uh, E element, right? And so the trick here is to short circuit this execution. So I do if and I check if F E is true if it's not, I don't have to do this anymore, right? So I'm not going to yield anything because this if statement is going to short circuit on this uh, evaluation and it's not going to do this. So it's not going to yield anything because this is false. So the only difference between the last example and this example is that I have one, 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 and what I'm doing here is I'm checking if the value is greater than one, then I'm going to keep it, right? And again, it's the same thing. I have uh, values, this converts it to an integer. I mean, this converts it to an iterator and then uh, with collect, it converts it back to a slice. So let's uh, run this and see how, what. so let's run this and see what we get here. So as you can see, we got a two, three, five, and eight as expected. So let's take a look at the reduce function. So reduce, what does it do? It takes an iterator, it takes a function, right? The function takes two arguments of the same type and returns an argument of the same type. It takes an accumulator of the same type. That's pretty simple. So what does it return? So it only, okay, so here's the thing. This whole function, right? This whole function only returns once, right? So it only returns, it yields, or should I say, it yields one element, right? It yields a single element, this accumulator. And this accumulator gets formed by ranging over i and just making sure that we pass in an accumulator and we pass the element and it's gonna, I don't know, like it really depends on your function, right? So uh, in this function, uh, it literally accumulates the value. So it like increments um, accumulator by V every single time. If you want, you could have something else. You could do like a if statement, you can say, uh, keep one or the other. It really depends up to you, right? But basically all this does is it just accumulates until it goes through every single element in this uh, iterator and then it returns that accumulator value. And let's uh, run this to see how it works. 
And as you can see, we got a 12. If we set the initial accumulator value to zero, as you can see, we got a six. And that makes sense because one plus two plus three is six. Okay, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. If you like this video, make sure to give me a like, subscribe, and I will see you later.